Hey, guys, check this out. Hey, boy! Come here, boy. Come here, boy. MySQL is the most popular database flavor in the world, powering millions of WordPress blogs and large complex enterprise applications. Today you'll learn how to combine cloud functions along with Google Cloud SQL to build an entirely serverless cloud database. And we'll combine it with an awesome tool called TypeORM, which will help us efficiently model and query relational data using nothing but TypeScript and Node.js. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and congrats to Fabian Howison, you're the t-shirt winner from last week's video. Send me your details on Slack, and if you missed out, just leave a comment comment below because I'm giving away another t-shirt with this video. Let's go ahead and start by addressing the obvious question of why would you ever want to use a MySQL database with Firebase? The platform already has Firestore, which is a fast, inexpensive database that scales out of the box. While Firestore will take care of the majority of your relational data modeling needs, there may be times when an SQL database is just the better tool for the job. Or you might just be working with a legacy database where you have no choice in the matter. No matter what the use case, my goal today is to show you how easy it is to integrate MySQL with Firebase. The first thing you'll learn is how to provision a Cloud SQL instance and then how to connect it to the Cloud Functions environment. The second big thing you'll learn is how to use a tool called TypeORM, which provides object relational mapping with TypeScript. And this allows us to completely manage our database structure and queries without ever having to write a raw SQL query. And using a tool like this will dramatically increase your productivity and developer happiness. The feature we're building today is a collection of HTTP Cloud Functions that allow us to read and write to the database. Our database contains a hippo table, and those hippos can own many hats. But the hats live in their own database table, so we'll need to build a join query to join all that data together into a single request. You'll need a few things to get started with this project. First, you'll want to have a Firebase or Google Cloud Platform project. And then I highly recommend you have a REST client like Insomnia or Postman, or the REST client plugin for VS Code so we can make requests to the Cloud Function endpoints after we deploy them. From there, we'll go ahead and open an empty directory with VS Code and then run Firebase init functions from the command line. You'll want to select TypeScript, although it is worth noting that it's possible to use TypeORM with vanilla JavaScript if you prefer. That will generate a functions directory, so we'll go ahead and cd in there and then install TypeORM, reflect metadata, and MySQL. From there, we'll jump into the automatically generated TS config and make a few updates. We'll set strict mode to false and enable experimental decorators as well as their metadata. And one last thing I'll mention is that you want to make sure you're running TypeScript version 3.5 or greater, so double check that in the package JSON. So that takes care of the setup for Cloud Functions. Now let's head over to Google Cloud Platform and create a MySQL instance. But first I'd like to point out that this is not a free service. On GCP, the smallest SQL instance will cost about $7 per month, but I actually think that's the lowest price that you'll find on any cloud. And you're billed by the second, so you can pause or zoom it at any time. We can create the instance by going to the SQL tab on the GCP console. Make sure that you select MySQL because the setup is slightly different for Postgres. You'll want to make a note of the root user password, and then when you get to the instance details page, you'll also want to copy the instance connection name. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this instance isn't just a single database, it's multiple databases pooled together. Along with a bunch of other fully managed features like automated backups and logging and all that good stuff. If you're building a real app, you likely want to have at least two databases, one for development and then one for production for your live customer data. So go ahead and create those on the databases tab and then I'll show you how to connect to them automatically based on the environment when we get to our functions code. So now that we have a Cloud SQL instance, we need a way to connect to it in our local development environment. The easiest way to handle this is to download the Cloud SQL proxy. This is just a convenient way to connect because it means you don't have to worry about IP addresses or SSL to connect to the instance. Go ahead and download it into the root of the project, then run this command from the command line. Just make sure to replace the instance connection name. And hopefully everything went well and it says ready for new connections. Go ahead and leave this terminal tab open because we want this process running in the background while we do everything else. The next thing we'll do is create a config.ts file in the source directory. The purpose of this file is to handle the connection to the actual database and also to switch between our development and production databases depending on the environment. And we also need to import reflect metadata for type ORM. That just gives JavaScript some better runtime type checking capabilities. Then Cloud Functions has an environment variable called node underscore env. It's undefined when you're working locally, but when you're in production, it's set to the string of production. So we can use that to switch between our production and development databases. 
From there, we'll set up an object for the connection options. And then I want to point out a few things that I've modified specifically for the Cloud Functions environment. First, you'll wanna make sure to point it to the development database. And then you'll want to set synchronize to true when you're in development. Now, normally with an SQL database, you need to create the database tables and then migrate changes whenever there's a change. But one of the magical things about type ORM is that it can handle all this stuff automatically. Now, I would like to point out that it's not always safe to use synchronize in production, but it's a super useful thing to have during development. In a few minutes, we're going to write some classes called entities, and those get compiled to the lib folder. And that takes care of the options that we want for the development database. And most of those will be the same in production, but there's a few things that we want to override if that node environment variable is set to production. And we can easily do that by conditionally merging in an additional object with the spread syntax. We'll go ahead and point it to the production database, and you may want to set synchronize to false, but we'll leave it enabled for now. And then we have this extra option here called socket path, which will point to cloud SQL slash your instance connection name. Now that gives us a configuration object to connect to both a production and development database. And now I'm going to write a function called connect that will actually make the connection or use an existing connection designed to optimize the use of the database in the cloud functions environment. The interesting thing about cloud functions is that they're short lived and their resources are provisioned on demand, but it is possible for a database connection to be shared between the functions. So we're creating this custom connect method in order to check for an existing connection by the configuration name. But if that connection doesn't exist, then it's going to throw an error. So we'll go ahead and catch the error, then create a new connection based on our configuration options. So this should help us optimize the response time of the function and limit the number of connections to the SQL database because that is a finite resource. Now we're ready to get into the fun stuff, starting with our entities in type ORM. An entity is just a TypeScript class that maps a database table to your code. So simply think of an entity as a database table. We'll start by creating an entity called hippo that uses the entity decorator. Now, because we have synchronize set to true, type ORM will automatically migrate this model to the database and sync it up every time we run the application. Now we need to add some columns to it, starting with a primary key. This value needs to be unique, and the easiest way to make it unique is to use the primary generated column decorator. This will automatically increment the ID for each new record you add to the database. So one, two, three, and so on. From there, we can use the column decorator, and type ORM will try to infer the type that we use in TypeScript. Now types in SQL are different than types in JavaScript, so you can manually set the SQL type by passing it as the first argument to the decorator. And that's all it takes to build a database table and model with type ORM. Now let's perform some CRUD operations on this model from our functions code. We'll go into the index.ts and import our connect helper, as well as the hippo entity. Now in this demo, we're just going to set up HTTP functions for simplicity, but you could also set these up with callable functions, or you could even set them up with Firestore functions if you wanted to pass data from Firestore to your SQL database to handle real-time features. This first function we're looking at here is called get hippos, and you'll want to make sure that it's an async function. The first thing you'll do in any function with the database is get the connection. The connection will allow you to interact with the database in a variety of different ways, but one of the most useful ways is with the repository API. This allows you to use one of your entities as a starting point and then make queries to update that entity or to query it or join it with other entities. And all you have to do is pass in the class name. Now, if we want to query all the rows from this database table, we can just call hippos.find. And that's just one of the many methods that you'll find on the repo to read and write to the database. And again, the benefit of type ORM is that you have all of these really easy to use methods instead of writing raw SQL queries although it is possible to pass in some raw SQL with the query method if you prefer. We can simply take the result of that read and then send it as the response from the function, and that will send it back to the client as JSON. So that function allows us to read all the hippos in the database, but currently the database is empty, so we need another function to write to it. This next function is called create hippo, and it will create a new hippo record based on the name and weight passed in the request body from the client. When working with an async function, it's a good idea to set up a try catch block, which will allow you to catch errors and then send them back to the client if necessary. We'll go ahead and set up the connection and make a reference to the repository just like we did in the previous function. Then this time we'll create a new instance of the hippo class. And then we can set the properties on that class to the data that was passed in in the request body. And in the context of a real application, that data would likely come from a form filled out on your website or from some other mechanism in your front end application. After those properties are set, we'll pass the class instance to the save method. 
Now the saved method might be different than the hippo class because you might have listeners on your database that modify the record before it actually gets committed to the database. So the data in the new hippo variable might be different than the data in the saved hippo variable. So just something to keep in mind there. Now you'll wanna make sure that you have your SQL proxy running in the background and then open up a new terminal tab and run CD functions and NPM run serve. This will serve the functions locally, and you should see URLs to the local functions here, which you can copy and paste, and then bring those over to a REST client like Insomnia. In the REST client, we can set up a new request that points to the get hippos function. If we make a call to that function right now, we should get an empty array as the response. And you may have noticed that request took two seconds, but don't worry, it won't be that slow in production. It's just the Firebase functions emulator that makes that slow. Now let's go ahead and point to the create hippo function, and this time we'll pass in a JSON body with the request. And notice how there's no ID or timestamp with the JSON body, but when we get the response back, you can see an ID has been automatically generated, and we also have a timestamp, which is created with a listener, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But for now, I'll go ahead and create a few more hippo records, and then we'll make another query with our get hippos function. And now you see that all three hippos are returned as an array of objects from the cloud function. What I wanna show you next is how I'm generating that created at timestamp, even though it's not a piece of data that we're explicitly passing to the database. If we go back to our hippo entity, we'll go ahead and create another column called created at, and then we'll use the before insert listener or hook, which allows us to run some code before the item is actually inserted into the database. So this allows you to basically hook into the lifecycle of the database to run code after a record's created or before, which is another very powerful feature of type ORM. But if you're using MySQL, then you most likely want to take advantage of its relational data modeling features. Now, if you remember earlier, I said hippos can have many hats, so we can create that relationship by using the one-to-many decorator. The decorator takes two arguments. The first argument is a function that maps the type for the relationship, which is the hat entity that we'll create next. And that entity will have an owner property that contains the ID of the hippo that owns that hat. Because a hippo can own many hats, but a hat can only be owned by one hippo at a time. From there, we'll switch over to the hat.ts file, which is our hat entity. The initial code for this entity is basically identical, and then we have the second half of the relationship, which is many to one between hats and hippos. In this case, it will set up an actual database column called owner, which contains the foreign key with the ID of the hippo that owns that hat. And what we've done here is set up a relationship with two database tables using minimal code. Now let's jump back into our get hippos cloud function and make a join query. We still wanna query all the hippos in the database, but we also want to join all of their hats from the separate database table when we make that query. We'll call create query builder on the hippo repo. And then this is an example of a left join. Basically, we'll get all of the hats that are owned by a hippo and then join the hat entity data for each hippo record. And lastly, we'll call get many to return all the hats on that query. That's how we make the query, but we also need a way to create new hats because currently there aren't any in the database. This function will look identical to the create hippo function, except it will take the owner ID of a hippo and then also the color of the hat to create the record. At this point, you can serve the functions and then we'll go back over to Insomnia. What I'm doing now is creating a few new hat records in the database, and each one will be assigned to hippo ID number one. Then if we go back and call the get hippos endpoint, you can see that it still retrieves all the hippo records, but it will also join the hat records to each one as well. So we now have a classic one-to-many relationship in an SQL database within our Firebase project. We've really just scratched the surface of what's possible with type ORM and MySQL, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn how to build awesome applications with Firebase, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.